Good morning everybody, my name is Shankarji. Now we will be studying about chapter 8, body movements. So what do you mean by body movements? We as animals, we need to move a lot. Without movement, uh, we cannot survive. So all animals have to move on a regular basis, including us. So for body movements, we need various uh, bones and various structures which helps us to move our bodies efficiently. First of all, what, I mean, what is the basic framework for our human body? It is known as a skeleton system. We all have bones and muscles. So this is known as uh, the system which is uh, made up of bones. That is known as skeletal system. And the system which is right uh, attached to it is known as the muscular system. So we all have 206 bones and uh, approximately close to 600 muscles in our body. So uh, mainly how the body movement occurs? The body movement occurs due to the bone and the muscle movement. The muscles contract and expand which allows the bones to move. So in this way the movement occurs. We will study about the human body movements in a little bit more detail. The places where our body parts can be bent are called joints. So types of joints. Now we are going to study about the types of joints in detail. First we are going to study about the ball and socket joint. Like say for example you are, you are balling a cricket ball. So for example the shoulder joint. So you have a, you have a shoulder bone over here and you have a ball connected to this bone. This is the upper arm and this is the forearm. So there is a ball and then there is a socket. There is a small uh, socket in which is there. So that you can rotate it completely. So you can rotate the hands completely like this. See, ball and socket joint. The forwards, you can rotate it backwards like this. Now, now we are going to study about the hinge joint. What do you mean by the hinge joint? Hinge joint means, for example, elbow, elbows and knees. If you look at elbows, hinge joints are those joints which only allow 180 degrees movement in only one direction. For example, elbows, no matter what you do, you can only bend in this direction. You can never bend elbows uh, in the other direction. You can only bend like this, you can bend like this. But for a ball and socket joint, the complete 360 degree rotation is possible. And by doing that, I am also dancing a little bit. Thank you so much. Right, and uh, now, uh, pivotal joints. What do you mean by pivotal joints? A pivotal joint is a joint where our neck joins the head. It allows us to bend our heads forwards and backwards. Let me explain. Pivotal joint. We, we have this uh, we have the skull, which is the head, and uh, we have our neck. Okay, so this is the pivotal joint. Here the joints join. So, what is the benefit of this? You are able to, we can able to bend our heads forwards like this, we can bend our heads backwards like this, we can also rotate our heads like this, in this direction, in this direction. Okay, so this enables us, uh, that's why it's on a spiral joint. It's very, very important uh, for our head and the, the rest of the body coordination. So, that's why it's on a pivotal joint. And then we come to fixed joints. Okay, we have a skull. We have 20 bones in the skull. However, no, there is only one uh, bone, one joint which we can move, which is the lower jaw. This is the upper jaw, this is the lower jaw. Only we can move the lower jaw like this. So actually the remaining 19 bones are fixed. They are fixed joints. Only one movable joint. So we have uh, the lower jaw has to be movable because when we eat, we need to open the jaw as per the requirement when we speak, we need. So that's why only this area is mobile, the lower jaw. The technical term for upper jaw is called maxilla and the technical term for lower jaw is known as mandible. So we can only move the mandible or the lower jaw. So now, we come to pelvis. It's also known as the pelvic girdle. The pelvic girdle is the trunk, our, uh, where our reproductive parts are there, where our private parts are there. So the pelvic girdle is this area. So for males, it's slightly different. For females, it's slightly different. For males, the hips are slightly thinner. For females, the hips are slightly heavier. The reason why females have a larger hips because it helps them in, uh, uh, in delivering the babies efficiently and to help them overcome the labor pain. But for male, they have less, lesser width compared to females because so that we can uh, uh, we can have more strength and we can uh, we can perform more uh, activities as compared to females because in general males are physically more stronger than females so that's the reason why nature has designed like that so 
uh, in general, the, the, the pelvis or the, or the pelvic girdle looks like this. See, we have the we have the upper body and we have the thighs. So it is joined with the thighs. So it, this is the, this is the general shape of the pelvis. Now, like I mentioned earlier, we all have seen that scary skeleton in the horror movies, the skull kind of thing. So this is the front view and this is the side view. So skull. I mean, we have two eye sockets, we have a nose socket, and we have the, our teeth. That's it. So that's bare skull. So 19 bones are fixed. One bone, the lower jaw, is mobile. So this is the skull front view and the side view. Left profile. So our skull looks like this. So this is how the skull is made of. Now. What about this nose? Uh, it's if you if you touch and feel the nose, it's I mean it's not like a bone. It's not very hard. You not feel something hard. It's it's a uh, it's made of cartilage. Cartilage can be defined as a thick muscular tissue. It's there like this cartilage. Even our ears are made of cartilage. Where bones are not possible because suppose we might sleep, we might turn around, we might sleep backwards, forwards. So if there was bone over here, it would hurt us a lot. So that's why nature has designed. A cartilage, so it's flexible. I mean, you can manage. So that's why certain areas in our bodies they are made of cartilages. They are strong, they are tough, but at the same time they are flexible. So that's why it's known as cartilage. So and then now we discuss about, like I mentioned earlier, the entire framework uh, is known as the skeleton system. Now we discuss about the rib cage. Now all our vital organs, like the heart, the lungs. They are very vital, they are very very vital for our survival. They have to be protected uh, from birth till death to, of the organism. So, so that's why they are known as the vital organs and that's why we have something known as the rib cage. The rib cage, our human rib cage has 23 bones on the left side, 23 on the right side. Totally you have 46 bones and uh, they are supported by the breast bone. They are also known as the sternum. So you can, you can feel the breast bone from here to here. If you touch your body, so you can feel the breast bone from here to here. It's very strong. And all the ribs are connected to the sternum, also known as the breast bone. And we have a hollow over here because this hollow is for stomach, liver, intestine, kidneys. So that's, that's the reason why the rib cage is absolutely crucial. And we all uh, need that for uh, safety purposes and also for efficient functioning of the vital organs, especially the heart and the lungs. Body part, our body, our bodies are divided into two parts, upper body and the lower body. So we have a plate kind of thing known as the diaphragm. So the body part above the diaphragm is called the upper body and the body parts below the diaphragm is the lower body. So, and we have, we come to the, the crucial, the most important part of all organisms, especially us, the human body. Human beings are on the top of the food chain, even greater than lion, tiger. Uh, why? Because of the backbone. Because earlier all animals uh, were, were uh, walking on four foot. So we stood on two legs and we had two limbs free. So totally we have four, out of four limbs, two limbs we are using for movement and two limbs we are completely free with 360 degrees movement. So we need uh, something to support our rest of the upper body. So that's why the backbone developed. And the backbone, if you look, it's like the S, S shape. It's in the form of S shape, which, which ranges, which starts from this uh, cervical area from the neck and it goes to the lumbar area, uh, just right next to the pelvis. So you can, you can take it till the pelvis, pelvic girdle. So we all have 33 bones in our backbone. Uh, where, which is absolutely crucial for our movement. Like say for example, we can bend, like say we can we can bend forward and we can bend a little bit backward but not too much. So that's why it gives it gives us movement a little bit forward. We can we can bend more in the forward direction and we can bend a little bit back in the backward direction. Uh, however, nature is designed in such a way that we don't need further. So this is good. So the backbone is the central part of all highly developed organisms including us human beings. So let me recap it is so the main types of joints are the ball socket joints which enables complete rotation 360 degrees movement rotation hinge joints they allow 180 degrees rotation only in one direction pivotal joints where our neck meets the shoulder and also the rib, rib cages and fixed joints, the joints mainly in the skull and internal body parts where we don't need to separate them. So the bones are jointed, they are fixed, they are joint, joined in a fixed way, they cannot be movable. They are fixed joints, they are immovable joints. And we discussed about the rib cage, the backbone, the skull, 
the pelvic girdle and the entire framework which is known as the skeleton system.